Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over, hopefully, a few last things about the Lorentz force and charges in the magnetic field. Now, before we go on, don't forget, please don't forget, subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Support my channel step-by-step -step science. Leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. All that good stuff. Thank you very much. Now, what we're going to go over two things in this video is... What happens when we take a charged particle, negative or positive, and we put it in a magnetic field and just put it there and then release it? Also, what happens to a charged particle, negative or positive, when it enters a magnetic field with some initial given velocity? Okay? And this is the equation we're going to use for Lorentz force. Of course, we're going to refer to that equation throughout this video. And the first thing I said is we're going to talk about what happens if I take a charged particle, such as a negatively charged particle, or a positively charged particle, and I just put them at rest in a magnetic field, okay? Here's the magnetic field. These are the magnetic field lines. They're going from left to right. This is the symbol B for the magnetic field. I have this charged particle and this charged particle. I put them right there, and when I put them there, they have no velocity, okay? You want to know what is the Lorentz force or what happens to those charged particles when we put them right there. Okay, now what determines what's going to happen to them is this equation, which is the equation we use to calculate the force on a charged particle in a magnetic field. Now, I didn't say one thing quite yet, but we'll go over that in just a moment. Okay, so in order to have a force, this is the Lorentz force is equal to the charge times the velocity times the magnetic field strength. Okay, Q is the charge of the particle. Now, it is a charged particle, so it does have some charge. It is a particle, and it's charged, so it does have some charge. We do have a magnetic field, so we have two of the things we need for there to be a force on those charged particles. We have the charge and the magnetic field. But we're missing one thing. We need to have a velocity. V is for the velocity of the charged particle. And I just said that we're going to take it there and put it there so the velocity is zero. They are at rest. Okay? They are at rest. They are not moving. So we have a charge and a magnetic field, but the velocity is zero. Then there is no force on those charged particles. And that means if I take a charged particle and I put it in a magnetic field, with a zero velocity, when it's at rest, it's just going to stay there. And there is no force. It's not going to move. It's not going to accelerate like an electric field. Okay? It's just going to be put there and left there like that. Okay? That is the first case we want to talk about what happens when we put a charged particle in a magnetic field. Now, the second case is what happens if we take a charged particle and we accelerate it outside the magnetic field, and then it reaches the magnetic field like a negative particle, and it already has some initial velocity as it enters the magnetic field. Now, you'll see, which is important in this case, which, of course, I'll point out why, it's traveling along the magnetic field in the same direction. The, the negatively charged particle is moving in this direction, which is parallel to the magnetic field because velocity is a vector, magnetic field is a vector, it's traveling in the same direction. This, the positively charged particle, is charging, is charging, is traveling in the opposite direction as the magnetic field. But in both cases, you can just simplify it by thinking about the charged particles that are moving parallel to the magnetic field. Okay, the direction doesn't really matter. Because once again, we're going to get out our Lorentz force equation to figure out what's the force going to be on these charged particles that are moving parallel to the magnetic field. Well, in this case, like in the previous case, we have some charge. So Q is the charge. Now, in this case, which we didn't have last time, we actually have some velocity. The, we, I told you the charged particles are moving with some initial velocity when they enter the magnetic field. And in this case also, like we had last time, we have a magnetic field, so we have some magnetic field strength. But will there be a force on those charged particles as they move parallel to the magnetic field? Now, this is the equation, but this isn't actually the complete equation because the complete equation includes this part where it says times the sine of theta. So really, to calculate the Lorentz force, you need to know Q, V, B, and the sine of theta, or theta. What is theta? Theta is the angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field vector. So this is the velocity vector. This is the magnetic field. This is the velocity. This is the magnetic What's the angle between those vectors? And we're going to talk about that in each case right now. So for the negatively charged particle, it's moving in the same direction as the magnetic field. And that means the angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field vector is zero. The angle between these two vectors is zero. 
the sine of zero degrees, it's zero degrees, the sine of zero degrees is zero, and that means there will be no force. Because even if we have a charge that's moving in a magnetic field, if it's moving parallel to the magnetic field in the same direction, the angle is zero degrees, the sine of, there's no force. So there'll be no force on this charged particle at all, at least not from the magnetic field. Now let's check out this one. Maybe this one will have a force. Well, it's the same equation, QVB sine theta. In this case, theta is not zero, but it's 180 because this one is traveling in this direction. This one is traveling in the opposite direction. Those are the opposite directions. That means the angle between those vectors is 180 degrees. And But if you remember your sine curve or you have your calculator out, the sine of 180 degrees is also zero. Do you remember that sine curve? 0, 180, 360. Okay, so that means there'll be no force either on either of those particles. Now, this doesn't mean they're not going to be moving because they come in with some initial velocity, but objects in motion, as Newton's third law says, okay, no, Newton's first law says, excuse me, objects in motion stay in motion. Objects at rest stay in rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Now, there's no forces, at least from the magnetic field, and we usually ignore, like, gravitational forces, so those particles, as they enter that magnetic field, they're just going to continue right through the magnetic field with the same velocity they had when they entered the magnetic field, like that, and they just fly off. Okay? So in both cases, whether the particle is not moving or if it's moving parallel to the electric field, there's no forces from the magnetic um, field or the Lorentz force. Okay, now, let's just, we just go over really quick because we... Uh, made this in comparison to this idea when the particle charge tra travels perpendicular to the magnetic field, when it travels perpendicular to the magnetic field, then there is going to be a force. Because once again, it's QVB, so we have a charge, we have a velocity, they have a magnetic field, but now it's the sign not of 0 or 180, but it's the sign of 90. The sign of 90 is 1. So there is going to be some force. The force is going to be greater than 0. Now, I don't know, we didn't say what Q, V, and B are, so we don't know, but if you would put numbers in here, values in here, you get some number greater than zero. So there will be a force. All right? And then, if we have it traveling in the other direction, well, this was for the negative one, this is for the positive one. Once again, the angle here between the vector, between the vector and the magnetic field is uh, 90 degrees. So once again, for this one, for the positively charged one, there'll also be a force because the angle is 90, the sine of 90 is one, and it's greater than, greater than zero. Now, once again, we don't know for either case what Q, V, and B are, the charge, the velocity, and the magnetic field strength, but it'll be something greater than zero. Okay, now you could maybe say one of them is negative and one of them is positive, but it's the magnitude of the force, let's just say. Take care of all that stuff. Now, I did go over this in another video, and I went over how you can use the right or the left-hand rule to determine the direction of the force. This is how you calculate the magnitude. We can use the direction by using the left and the right-hand rule. I'll put a link up here in the upper right-hand corner to those videos so you can check out those videos and figure out a little bit more where we go over some problems for the magnitude and also some problems for the direction of the force. Okay, so there you go. Thank you very much for uh, watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, maybe you could uh, subscribe. That would be nice. Le get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos, step-by-step -step science. And let's see, you could give me a thumbs up for this video. You can leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And of course, don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.